Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. My guest today is Anita Anello, and you are in for a dose of enthusiasm as she talks about fresh off the most fun three weeks she's ever had in business and talks about overcoming. There are lots of encouragements to each of us to help each other get set free. So it's an inspiring and I hope entertaining conversation for you. Let me tell you a little bit more about Anita. Anita Anello helps corporate women of faith in the tech industry who want to break free of corporate life and develop a consulting business by providing spiritual guidance and support as they transition in a new phase of their career. She offers practical advice and resources to help them establish and grow their consulting business, such as tips for building a client base, setting rates, and finding a healthy work-life balance as they work towards their goal of working 20 hours a week while making two to three times their previous income. So without further ado, I introduce you to Anita. Hi, Anita. Welcome to Wildspire. It's a pleasure to have you with me today. It's so good to uh, see you. Thanks, Steph. I'm so excited to have this conversation. You and I have talked a couple of times now, and I just, I just, I love having conversations with you. It's so fun and so eye-opening, and just what you're doing in the world today is super inspiring, like picking up and going somewhere else. I love that. <laughs> I love the adventure in you. I'm a I am not a closet adventurer. I'm a full blown out there mm -hmm. adventurer. So I'm I'm always I always have a great time just catching up with you and seeing how you're doing personally. And then just great conversation always comes from that from you and I. Oh, cool. Thank you, Anita. I feel the same. So we were talking before we started, and you talked about overcoming mm. and how important it is and how much you want to bring this to your audience, to the world. Mm -hmm. Will you tell me a little bit about what overcoming means to you? So that's a good question. I think that, I think it's really interesting that, well, there's a couple of things. I'll break it down. This, this is just the way my brain works. So just bear with me. Um, <laughs> you see in the marketplace and you see your friends, like you see on your, social feed or just your buddies that you hang out with. Like there's this impression, oh my gosh, their life's amazing, right? And it looks a certain way from the outside. And we see that all over the marketplace on and online businesses and all that kind of stuff. Like, oh, I'm in front of a jet. No, like that's amazing. I love all that. By the way, I'm not knocking on any of that. I think it's awesome. Everybody go be, you know, millionaires and great business owners. Like I, I'm totally for that. But so we see this we get this perception, this picture from other people that somehow life is amazing for them, but sometimes it's not amazing for me. So that's one thing that I notice. But then don't I know when I walk through trials myself that, and by the way, the trials aren't, I don't believe that they're, uh, I don't believe that they're bad. I believe that they're there <clears throat> to mature me and to grow me and to stretch me in the way that, you know, my framework is a, like, I'm going to talk in the framework of this is what I believe that God's put on my heart to be able to grow into the person that I'm supposed to be. So if that's the case, it would be a good God that says he doesn't cause bad things in my life to happen, but the opportunities for me to grow in the midst of those trials absolutely exist. So when we bring that back to overcoming and kind of bring that full circle, what I've learned, and I've really been pressing into this in the last couple of years, it's not that the trials aren't going to come. It's not that the hard stuff's not going to be there. It's that how quickly can I recover and then get back on kind of like the uphill um, swoop of whatever my life is walking through. And so 
the things are going to come at me, the difficulties are going to come. But I think the oh, I think where we win in overcoming is we start to recognize that we put in our own little framework, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And then we we work through those things and overcome the stuff faster, so that we can recover faster, enjoy more about life, and kind of get back to what our purposes are here. So that that's that's what actually I think that's one of the secret sauces of life is that we just like recognize, oh my gosh, here's a problem. How do I walk through that as I guess maybe as quickly as reasonable, acknowledge it, do something about it, and then go forward and, and shift that perspective. Mm. I want to read the quote that's behind your head. Oh yes. Because it <laughs> speaks to this. Yeah. And says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. Yeah. And I think of what you're talking about in overcoming is this a ability to know ourselves as discouragement proof. Mm. And I think in that, it doesn't mean we don't feel discouraged and it certainly doesn't mean that bad things don't happen. Yeah. But we, when we know that we're okay, no matter what, mm -hmm. and, you know, we can talk about God being with us. We can talk about um, this intelligence of life supporting mm -hmm. us, however it is that we see it. Yep. We can walk in the world with fear less, I'm calling it, you know, not mm -hmm. completely without ever experiencing fear, but it's... Right. I feel like I've, I'm finally experiencing that for myself. Oh, I don't have to be afraid of fear. And now I feel like I can do anything. Like I know that I can and I'll be okay. I can be afraid and I'll be okay. I can feel yeah. discouragement and I can be okay. So what is it, Anita, that, that you see that really sustains us, that allows us to have that resilience to come back and keep going when things go wrong? I, th I think there's a couple of things there. I think one of the things that you mentioned, which is super important, um, we have emotions like as God made us, right? That's always my framework. If somebody's listening and they have a different framework for life, that's totally fine. Just be where you're at. And if it's okay, I'm going to be where I'm at. So I know that God has designed me in a way that emotions are part of life. Like they're, I'm not supposed to discredit those when I have emotions, good, bad, whatever, um, I don't actually even think emotions are good or bad. But when I when I experience emotions that are, let's say, more in the negative trend, my job is to actually acknowledge those. That's what that's what the definition of like somebody with really high emotional intelligence has is that I acknowledge these are the feelings that I have, and then I work through those. If I don't acknowledge them and I try to push them off, then I mean, what good does that do me? Like you see so many people that are walking around and they're having difficulties in life, in their marriage, in their relationships, at work, maybe in their weight or all sorts of things that maybe they, and it works its way out. Like a, my, my experience in life has taught me if we don't acknowledge the emotions that we're having, then we will stuff those down and they will work their way out in probably a not an amazing way. Okay. So then when it comes to like a, um, what was your question? Asking the framework of, of being able to be an overcomer? Well, it, it will weren't the words, but go ahead and say that. And I'll ask more questions if I, if I have them. I think, I think it's a couple of things for me. Number For me, it's always like, I'm going to walk through kind of this framework that I have. And as you're listening to this, what I would encourage you to do is you don't have to adopt my framework and it, you don't have to say like my framework's the only way. I don't think that that's how it works. I think that what you want to listen for is just the steps that I go through when I'm, when I'm down and I'm having a difficult time, then how do I overcome that? So in January, I was at my mastermind and I started the week and I was like, this is amazing. I got a great brand new idea for my business, a new offer. My business has been amazing so far in a lot of ways. It's been super hard in a lot of different ways. We can talk about that. But I felt like I had a download from the Holy Spirit and I started like journaling, like I'm going to do this, 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 and this next. Okay. 
So as I walked through the week of this mastermind, I started out Monday getting this download, taking all my copious notes and being like, yes, this is awesome. This is going to be so cool. This is exactly what I wanted to step into next. Tuesday, feeling pretty good about that. And again, like talking it out with my closest peers in my mastermind and getting some feedback from my coach and all this kind of stuff. Like Tuesday, feeling awesome. Wednesday, yes, cutting just just like, yes, this is going to be so cool. Wednesday night, I don't know what happened. I just don't know. Middle of the night, it was like like this cloud came over me. Thursday morning, I woke up and I was insecure. I was afraid. I was worried. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not going to work out. Like I felt, I felt like I took a step way, way, way back. And for me, what I do is I just, I wrestle with God. Like I, I actually love wrestling with God. Like, God, you gave me this vision. You gave me this picture. You gave me this whole blueprint, all of these steps for my next step in my business and in our lives to take care of our household. And I, I was actually kind of like shocked that by the end of the week, really, I mean, I was just, I was literally, I was like a mess. I came home, I was crying on the plane. Like I, it took me weeks, Stephanie, mm -hmm. to unravel this nonsense that was going on in my mind after being so amazing, like on this high of, yes, this is awesome. This is what's going to happen next to a valley. So hanging out in the valley for a while, like three weeks is kind of a long time, right? So, and feeling like, nope, I'm moving forward, like pushing myself through. I have a tendency to be super hard on myself. My husband tells me all the time, honey, you're always so hard on yourself. Why, how about just take it easy, you know? But um, so one of the things I realized in that process is that I actually have a system to kind of overcome stuff. Now, my system looks like this. I love to get up in the morning and read scripture then I love to go and, and pray. Then I love to go and work out. Then I love to get on to my day of business. I kind of just kind of gets just gets my brain right to get moving and have a conversation with God about what goes next. Then I I reach out when I'm really having a hard time and I need to overcome. Then I do things like I reach out to my family, the people that I live with that know me the best, and they help to reset my perspective. And I'm like, hey, I'm struggling with this thing. What do you guys see? Because I'm having a hard time. Like, I can't see the way forward. And they give me some feedback. And I know that they love me and they have the best intentions for me. And so they gave me this feedback that, like, starts to unhook a couple of things. And I'm like, okay, I can take another step forward. Then if I'm still struggling, like, I'll reach out to people in my mastermind, people that I know that I trust, people that are in my like the my friends closest to me. And as they start speaking back into my life and into my heart and into my my ears, like, hey, Anita, like, remember you said a week ago or three weeks ago that this is what you were going to do? Like, so see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going through some steps to be able to kind of unlock wherever I'm stuck. At the end of the night, I love to be able to, um, all of a sudden you kind of, you know how you kind of have like that epiphany of, wait a minute, I already know how to do this. What, why did I stop doing this? I start journaling. I start journaling about the day. I start. I stopped focusing on where I felt I was stuck and I actually shifted gears and started focusing on the wins that I was having in life. Oh my gosh, you know what? Today is day 67 of 90 on the current workout plan that I'm working on. Well, that's a win. Let me go ahead and jot that down. So I start like logging those wins. Well, you know what? I did a pretty good job homeschooling my kids today and blah, 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 blah. All right. I write those down. That actually helps that process. So when we have thoughts, my um, one of my mentors, love him, Ray Edwards, who's a fabulous copywriter. He has told me before, Anita, your thoughts aren't really complete until you write them down. So we have these thoughts. We might verbalize these thoughts, but until we write them down, the idea is that the thought is not complete. So as I'm start, I'm as I'm journaling at the end of the day, then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I know this thing over here is kind of plaguing me, bothering me. I'm trying to figure out. I feel like I'm stuck. But if I really focus on all the good things that I've done and what I am, where I am winning, then it's don't we know it starts shifting our perspective. And then the last thing I do before I go to bed is um, I start writing down, okay, what are, be, what are going to be my next wins tomorrow, okay? 
and I, and the wins for tomorrow. Um, this is from what's the name of the book? Um, 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 the Gap and the Gain by Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. And in that, they say the most important hour of your day is actually the last hour where you decide ahead of time, this is how I'm going to win tomorrow. So no more than three wins tomorrow. So don't give yourself like a list of 20. That's going to set you up for failure. But see how I walk through the process, Stephanie, of realizing like, wait a minute, I know how to overcome stuff. So then I go through this and I start flexing those muscles again of, I know how to overcome. And really, it's kind of like we said earlier, I think, the, I think the win in life is that you recognize that you're stuck and you try to overcome being stuck just faster. Like that's it. You know, instead of it taking years to figure this stuff out or months to figure this stuff out or weeks or, you know, like how do we get down to days or minutes? So, so that we can kind of recover faster. So even though I said that process was about a three week process for me, when I started going through my personal blueprint for overcoming challenges, and you can fill in whatever you want as your personal blueprint, then I realized, oh, okay. Like I actually immediately as I started doing that, I started kind of being on the upswing and figuring things out again. Mm -hmm. And that's where breakthrough happens. You know, there are a couple things in what you said, Anita, that really speak to me. And I think we'll speak to someone regardless of mm -hmm. their own personal journey of overcoming something or getting past something. And the thing that I heard and what you said is that you have a knowing that you will overcome, mm -hmm. that you have before and that you will again, no matter what it is that's whatever obstacle is appearing in your way. And the truth is that no matter who you are, listening, watching this, everything that you've gone through, you've gotten through, you've gotten over yeah. to where you are right now. And that's something that we can rely on, that all these things are changeable and that we have what we need to get through them. Mm -hmm. and when you know that, you don't spend tech, tend not to spend as much time wallowing in the... Yeah. The, the hopelessness and the despair or the discouragement that you might, that I might experience. That's one thing that I heard. And another was that very quickly, it seems, you started paying less attention to the feeling of being stuck and yeah. the story of I'm stuck and more attention to the things you're actually creating and what mm -hmm. you want to be creating. And I see this is actually very natural and we, it, we do it so naturally and it's such an ordinary thing that we don't see how miraculous it is, but mm -hmm. this is our innate resilience in action is that as soon as we stop paying attention to something that feels bad and we just put like, it, it's simple. You don't even have to notice you're doing it. If, if I'm involved and engaged in something else, whether it is washing my hair you know, it doesn't, it could be very mundane. As soon as I do that and actually engage with it and put my attention on creating, I am feeling that and the creation of it comes alive. Yeah. I can put my attention back on that story of stuckness whenever I want, mm -hmm. but it's that simple. And I hear that in your story that you went, well, you know, I don't want to or need to pay attention to this. Let me put my attention over here. And then it becomes constructive. And then you're on the path of creation instead of stuckness. Yeah. One of the things that we can just acknowledge for maybe somebody who's listening, like I, I know that sometimes when you're stuck, um, it, whatever you're walking through is hard. Like, let's just acknowledge sometimes there's some really, really hard things. Like my husband, a couple, two years ago, actually almost right now, two years ago, goes in for an outpatient procedure. An hour later, we're in the ER and he's having a very serious reaction in his heart. And we end up in the cardiac wing with him for a week. And so, like, let me just be clear. Like, sometimes the stuff that we're walking through is really, really, really hard. And so I just want to acknowledge that as you're hearing that. I know there's been times in my life when I heard somebody say, just shift your attitude or something like that. And I was like, 
don't say that. Like that would make me so mad. So I just want to acknowledge some somebody. But I also love what you just said, Stephanie, because the reality is, is wherever anybody's at right now, you have a little evidence file inside of your brain that is can tell you, can remind you. So let me just call this out right now. If you feel like you're so stuck that you can't see the way through, you don't have your own blueprint, you don't you don't know what to do next. I just want to call out the fact that you do have an evidence file inside of your brain that can tell you you have overcome something before. It may not be the thing that you're walking in right now, but you do have evidence that says I've overcome, I'll just use some things that I know in my life. I've overcome divorce. I've overcome tragedy. I've overcome having a hard day schooling my kids. Like I've overcome, uh, I don't know, um, like a body image issue. I've overcome whatever, feeling badly about myself, getting distracted on my phone for a couple of hours when I was supposed to be doing work. I don't know, right? See how it can go from like the most dramatic thing to the least dramatic thing, but I still have the evidence file in my brain that tells me that I actually have overcome. So if you feel like you're so stuck that you're so stuck that you're so stuck, I would actually encourage you to start writing some of that down. Like if you're somebody's listening today and they're like, I just thanks, that's great, but I can't do anything with this. I just really want to challenge you on that. Maybe pull out a piece of paper when you're done listening here and start writing down the things that you've overcome and maybe post that on your wall or something like that because I think we all have the ability to help one another get set free, like both in a spiritual context and a physical context and an emotional context. And isn't that why we love connecting with other people? Because somebody's going to listen to this podcast today, Stephanie, and they're going to be like, oh. it's like waking right up. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what these ladies are talking about. And I didn't even realize I was so stuck until she just said that thing right there. And now I know, now I have the practical and tactical steps to be able to take forward because that's just me i'm like super practical and tactical i'm like just give me the steps i'll do the steps i don't want to be wallowing around anymore in my i don't know phase i just want to just help me move forward and i think that's where real life happens too it's being able to grow and mature and like put off the old and put on and walk in the new like I just think that's where so much of the adventure of life actually happens is going forward and doing something new and walking in more today than I was yesterday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you called attention to that, Anita, about um, you're clearly not, and I am not dismissing the pain mm -hmm. and the suffering that somebody may be in right now. Yeah. What I am pointing to is that the shift in focus is all it takes. Yeah. As soon as you take your attention off of that and put it on to something oh, that yeah. feels better, you feel better. There's no should in that. Yeah. There's no therefore you must. And if you don't, you're a loser. That's right. not at all what I'm saying. It's just knowing that is, it's not only comforting, it is it is what allows me to be discouragement proof because I know that at some point, even if I don't do a damn thing, mm -hmm. it's going to change this experience I'm having. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share briefly. Um, this could be an overcoming example. It surely is in the moment. I, I think it was about a week and a half ago. I was about as low as I think I've been in a really long time Oh wow! for no reason that I could tell you nothing that I could. And I, I was just, I was crying. Mm -hmm. I felt lost. I felt discouraged. And I knew it. This was key. I knew I was low. Mm -hmm. Now, if I hadn't known that I would have felt probably much, much worse because I would have felt completely lost in the experience. Yeah. But I knew I was low. And what I know about being low is that it doesn't last. It mm -hmm. comes and goes just like the highs, ups and downs. So, and I wasn't for, I think the first time in my life, I was not afraid to feel the way I was feeling. Mm, wow. 
That's even, powerful. Even though I didn't like it, <laughs> it wasn't fun. Yeah. It still hurt. So here I am feeling as low as I'm feeling in the midst of it, but knowing that I'm feeling in a low spot and knowing that I'm okay, it's not going to hurt me. It's going to pass through. And I actually got on the phone with my coach. I actually didn't get on the phone, but I, I left a, a voice message because I just kind of knew that I needed to talk it out. Mm -hmm. And so I left a ridiculously long message, but in that I was really talking myself through it because mm -hmm. I knew I was okay. And saying it out loud was really good to hear. And by the time I got to the end of the message, I'm like, yeah, this, this already feels lighter. I'm okay. You don't need to get back to me. I mm -hmm. really know that I'm okay. I'm leaving this for me. And it was so cool because it didn't disappear completely, mm -hmm. but it, like, if we pay attention, it is always shifting. There's always a moment of, even in those three weeks when you were feeling the way that you were feeling, I'm sure that you laughed. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there was yeah. a moment where you completely forgot all about it. Like yeah. we forget. We're so like, oh, I'm having the most horrible day, but there's always one beautiful moment. Yeah. And it's sort of like that, knowing that there's always a beautiful moment. There's always a peaceful moment. There's always a reprieve. Even when things feel really bad, it just lets me know. And I notice it more and I notice it faster. And I tend not to stay there as long. And if I stay there, I know that even that is okay. Yeah. So that's kind of what, what overcoming is looking like to me these days. <laughs> that's so powerful. So if you're listening and you listen to my story and then Stephanie's stories, there's something that we both had in common. We started talking about it out loud, right? When you process just a little, I'll put on my little homeschooling teacher hat, I'll just teach real, real quick. When you think about things in your own, inside your own mind, and then you just process them internally, your brain actually processes that information completely different, like in a different spot than if you speak something out loud. It's why when you were kids and you you had to do like your math facts or whatever, they'd say, okay, repeat them aloud over and over and over again. So what you and I are talking about, Stephanie, and I actually love this because what I hear when you're talking, it's like you're practicing self-love and you're practicing love towards others, even if you don't know it by sharing your story and sharing your testimony. So as you were speaking out loud to your coach and then, oops, sorry, then your, um, ears were hearing it out loud in a totally different way, it hits a different part in the brain. And isn't that so cool? So I'll use a phrase in my household all the time. My, my kids, my husband, they all know this. I'm like, I'm just going to say something out loud to see if it sounds crazy. And at first they'd be like, what? what? And I was like, no, you know, it's just because it's one of those things that if I say it out loud and I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. You're right. It is a genius idea. Or I say it out loud and I was like, that does sound crazy. I'm not doing that. That's an awful idea. But something different happens when we say things out loud. So I'm so proud of you for showing up and just calling up your coach and saying, these are the things I'm processing for this extra long message. And then actually, you know what? I'm good. I'm totally good because I just was able to lovingly care for myself. And don't you know, I hadn't even thought about it this way. The things that we're talking about, they're actually a, a super amazing form of courage. We talked about that, but they're also a form of self-love. That as I love myself enough and acknowledge, these are the emotions I'm having. This is where I'm at. This is hard. How do I overcome this? How do I figure these things out? Like that's actually one of the most loving things that we can do. And then as we model that and talk about it, it actually helps other people around us get set free. So I just, I love hearing your story because not only do I see a different version of you showing up from the last time we spoke, like you just look so much more free and so much more ready to take on whatever your next challenge is be just because of what you've just walked through. But also you just blessed somebody else by just describing, hey, this is what I did and this is what worked for me. And then, so just try it. Like, that's what's so exciting when we get on podcasts and talk through these kinds of things without having like this weird specific agenda and only these questions and all this kind of stuff. I love where every time I talk to you, Stephanie, I just love where the conversation goes because it's just, it's such a gift every time. Mm. 
I really believe that when we speak from what we've seen, mm. what people hear is not just the words. It's what they feel underneath them. They feel the mm -hmm. place that that came from. Yeah. They feel the the grace. They feel the the care, the love, mm -hmm. the how held you are, how held we are as humans, and we forget. But that's in your story. Yeah. So the details, the details may speak to someone, but I think it's far more powerful what's underneath the message of that, the feeling of that. And yes, it's powerful. This is why I tell people, if you've got a message on your heart to share, please share it mm. because it's for you and it's also for us. And no matter who hears it, how many, whatever, it makes a difference because we feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that so cool too? When we show up in the marketplace with an intention to serve and to help and to honor and to love, um, that is going to resonate with someone, right? You know this from being around in business for a while, that you that when you show up, somebody is waiting to hear what you have to say. And they're going to hear it differently than when I show up because somebody is waiting to hear what I have to say. And that helps us know that we're you use words like it it's help us know that we're held and but also like every human on the planet we all want to be seen we all want to be acknowledged we all want to be heard we all want to connect with other people and so the connection that we can make by sharing our stories of encouragement and overcoming like how powerful is that 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 we can show up right here today we're recording this on April 17th 2024 and so as we record that, there's something going on in the world around us, uh, a lot of stuff that's not amazing and a whole bunch more that is amazing. And as we talk about it and we share those stories, then we just set somebody else free along the way. I just love that. I love having these kinds of conversations because I know that I know that I know that it helps somebody else, just like somebody else helped me and somebody else helped you along the way. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. So you mentioned before we started recording that the last three weeks you've been having more fun than <laughs> like the most fun of your life. Do you yes. want to tell me a little bit about what that fun is? Like what's making it so fun for you right now? Oh, okay. So I've had a business for uh, this business that I'm currently in. I've had for the last five years um, and I have spent a lot of time. I had kind of that work ethic that was like pretty typical American work ethic that you either work harder to get ahead or you go get more education to get ahead. And those are the, those are the recipes, the ingredients for the recipe for success. And so I've done that. Like I, I know how to do it. I know how to be a high performer. I know how to show up and serve well. Like I know how to do that. And I, I, I previously admitted that I tend to be pretty hard on myself. And so um, that idea that, there's so much going on when you first start as an entrepreneur that you have to do it all. And it's different than when you're an employee because you, you know, you might work on a team as an employee, but you know, there's just, there's, there can be an opportunity as an entrepreneur to work twice as much as you're currently working in your job right now and make absolutely nothing. <laughs> and that's, can I say that I've had those seasons and then I've had the other where I've made significantly more than I ever made before in my um, employment and and then work half or a quarter of a time. And that's kind of where I am now. And I, I am so excited in the last couple of weeks, I have been creating a new offer and just got connected with uh, a new coach. And it has so opened my eyes to what is possible in the marketplace today, kind of post covid and what's available to us. And so I have a new offer where I'm helping, not new to me, um, but new out to the marketplace where I'm helping entrepreneurs who want to do six and seven figure years, months, or days. You can totally choose whatever that looks like. And just the creative process for me as I work through this with myself and with other clients has been so much fun, Stephanie. Like I, I love having fun. And I love being able to show up and be like, oh my gosh, I've had fun in all these other areas of my life. And I can do that all day long in my business because I just get to talk to, to people and I get to 
unlock and unleash different things that are blocking them. And then we start to see the possibilities like that's so fun to me. It's just the most fun I've ever had in my business. And it's it's like I'm just starting to scratch the surface again of what's possible in a whole new way. I feel like God's opened up my eyes to show up in, in a way that is, this is what I said the other day. It's like the me inside of me times three that's all of a sudden woken up, right? So it's I'm going in and figuring out these are the skills that I already have and I'm unleashing in, in a whole new way into the marketplace um, and it's not that I wasn't doing that before, but I, in this new offer, it's just, man, it's like blowing my mind. I almost actually don't even have language around the whole thing because it's just so exciting. It's just, I, I'm just so, I'm so pumped to be able to help entrepreneurs be able to be set free because don't we know as entrepreneurs, not only do we have the opportunity to work more and make less and all that kind of stuff, but it can also be kind of lonely. It can be the entrepreneurial journey can be um, it can be difficult. It can be confusing and overwhelming and you can feel stuck really quickly. And so um, like I'm on a mission to help other women of faith, like unlock something inside of them that can help them just just go, go do the things that God's called them to do. Mm. I want to ask you more about that, Anita, about <laughs> what is it that's unlocked in you? What's What looks different now than it did before? I see what's possible. I think that's the biggest thing. I see what's possible in the marketplace. Um, you know, you and I had talked before we even started about some of these fears that you didn't even know they were there and then you're aware of them and you overcome them. I, I will openly admit, um, in my entrepreneurial journey, I, I haven't had a much, I haven't had a ton of fear around failing, but I have had fear around success. And it was based on these stories that I was telling myself that if I'm, as I'm more successful, these things will happen in my marriage. These things will happen to my kids. These things will happen to me. These things will happen around me. These things will happen to people I love and my relationships closest to me. And as I've been unpacking and realizing that those were only stories that I was telling myself. And then because it's a story I've told myself, I realize, oh my gosh, it's like a garment that doesn't fit anymore. I can take that story off and I can start telling myself a new story. So in seeing what's possible, I'm also starting to tell myself a new story. And that has, it's like unleashed something that can't go back in. It's just, I mean, I'm walking around, my husband's looking at me, he's like, hey, what's going on? Like, you look different. What has happened? <laughs> and we're talking about it and we're expanding our minds to see what's possible in this new season for us. And it's like God's opened up. So let me, well, no, no, no. Let me rephrase that. Because I believe that the abundance that I'm talking about was already there, but now my eyes can see it. It's yeah. like the blinders have been taken off and it's like, oh my gosh, look at what is available. And it was already all there, you know? Think about it if you buy a new blouse or you buy a new car or you go and start and travel. All of a sudden, your eyes be like, oh, my gosh, I just bought myself a new car. Look, there's red cars all over the place. It's that kind of thing. Like abundance already exists. I believe abundance already exists all around us. The ability to walk through fear and be an overcomer and um, have a super successful business and do six and seven figure days or months or years, whatever you want. That's actually all around us all right now, but we have to open our eyes up to that. And so engaging with a coach that has helped me to see that for myself has made all the difference in the world. So here's the other part of it. It's an investment that I'm making. So as I show up and invest in myself to be able to push past my own limiting beliefs to ha allow somebody else to come alongside me to open up my eyes and open up to my mind my, my mind to what's possible and I make that investment so I show up differently when I make an investment right we know this if I consume information uh if I act like a consumer and I just take anything everything in for free by the way there's some great stuff out on the internet that's free I'm not knocking the great stuff 
Um, but I just know for me and I know for my most successful clients, when they show up and they invest, we show up differently. And so invest in the form of I plunk down some money and I go and say, can you, uh, a really good friend of mine who has a phenomenal YouTube channel, her name is Diana Gladney. If you need anything, everything, all things like audio, podcasts, video, all the kind of stuff, like she is, she's the bomb. Uh, and we, if you want, we can put a link to her in the show notes. Um, but she said, you know, and I have heard her say this a couple of times. She says, when I paid for a coach, I I specifically invested in myself so that I wouldn't stay the same. And her message, I just saw her a couple of weeks ago and just recorded an episode with her as well. And I was like, you know, if my friend's smart enough to recognize that she doesn't want to stay the same, like, why can't I recognize that for myself is that I want to get beyond, beyond the previous success that I've had and I want to go farther well, don't we know the best way to do that is to invest in ourselves and go and connect with new people, new ideas, new ways of thinking, different ways that we can see things. And in a, the most simple way possible, just break through the old things that were holding us back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like the lion inside of me has been completely unleashed. And it's like, whoa, this is so exciting. This is go time. You know, I mean, I, literally, it's like I can't contain myself. Stephanie, I'm waking up in the middle of the night with new ideas. And I they are it. the kind of ideas that I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going to change that person's business. Oh, my gosh, this is going to change that person's family. This is going to change my family. It's going to change your family. Like, this is this is amazing. What an incredible gift I have been given that I love to be able to share with others. Mm. I love hearing that. There is so much for us to celebrate. And I think you know, the, the metaphor I would use for it is there were these invisible walls I didn't know I was creating to create mm -hmm. my world. And they mm -hmm. were walls created by fear. And they were meant to protect me. Mm -hmm. But when I didn't need to keep myself safe anymore because I knew I was safe, the walls come down. And you're right. It's like mm -hmm. things that were always there now are obvious. The path to building a business looks way simpler. Yeah. Like just show up and do what I know to do being me. Mm -hmm. And and if there's something for me to learn, I'll know to learn it and I'll go and learn it. Yeah. If there's a place for me to invest, and absolutely there are, yeah. uh, and there have been, oh my goodness, there is something I, when I was, when I was married, I used to always go on these transformational journeys of different types, work with coaches. And it was one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. And I would always go to my husband and be like, is it okay if I spend money on this? Cause like, mm, ask yeah. to spend. not that I needed his permission, but we're in agreement, right? Like I yeah. can't spend money without letting him know about it. So, right, right. And he would be like, Oh, Stephanie, I can't tell you no, because you always get something out of it. Everything you do, you get something out of it. It's always <laughs> worth it to you. And yes. What he, he said it kind of exasperated, but what I've come to see is that I create the transformation. Oh, so yeah. I know to invest in something, then I am the one who brings it. And the investment is a part of it. It's not the entirety of it, but it's, it's me showing up with it. And I know mm -hmm. that. And for me, that is such a worthwhile thing. And I will continue to do it for the rest of my life yeah. as I am guided, because it's just, it just gets deeper. It gets more rich. And I love that this has unleashed uh, creativity in you, Anita, that you haven't experienced like this before. And now yeah. the world gets to benefit from it. So thank yeah. you for sharing it. That's amazing. Oh, you're so welcome. So one last thing that you said that is really interesting to me that so I didn't, I don't know that I ever necessarily, I, I understand when people say imposter syndrome, but I kind of don't all at the same time. Because what you're talking about, Stephanie, is like, you're just showing up in your business now in a whole new way, in a simple way, and you're just called to be you. Like, I kind of, I guess maybe I'll put it this way, intellectually, I think, how can we, how can we show up and be anybody else anyway? But then also in your heart, 
you sometimes you do know like, oh, you know, um, so at the, the only reason I bring that up is because if you're hearing those kinds of things and, and you feel like you're walking through imposter syndrome, can I just say, just throw that off. That's just a story that you're telling yourself. Just show up and be you. Like I can only be the Anita. I can only be the Anita Anello that God has made me to be at this season of my life right here, right now. I'm actually not even going to be the same Anita a year from now or a week from now or I was last week because I'm always thinking and growing and stretching and changing and all that kind of stuff. But isn't that what's so cool about this journey is that we as entrepreneurs can just show up and be ourselves and then all of a sudden the comparison drops off us, the fear drains off us, and they're like, oh, it's actually kind of simple to just go and do this thing. If you want to do a phenomenally successful podcast like Stephanie, like you just go up and do go and do the thing, whatever that looks like. Like I just want to encourage somebody who's listening to show up and be you and just be on the step that you're currently at. Um you know, when I when I say, hey, this is my offer, I know that there are people that are like, you know, you can if you if it's time, then it's time to step forward. If it's not time, that's OK. Just be where you're at. Like it's not always time for everybody to take the next step. But when it is, listen to that and listen to Stephanie's experience of every time she invested in herself, she got something out of it. She grew. She had transformation like I love that. I love that for her. And I love hearing when people walk through that for themselves, because that's what I experience all the time. Every time I go and invest in myself and I'm determined and decide ahead of time, this is going to be so good. I'm going to get something out of that. It's awesome. It's so, I mean, like, I feel like that's where real life happens. Actually, when we're willing to step into that cycle of growing over and over and over and over and over again. And for me, that's where the adventure in life also happens. So I just love that. Mm. Yes. None of that happens unless we're engaged and taking action. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't. It's, it's kind of going back to what you said earlier, Anita, about the thought isn't complete until you write it down. Mm -hmm. There's something about bringing it more into form. And we do that with our actions yes. and it really is a powerful part of creation. And it's sort of like those two pieces, there's taking action to create and seeing through the invisible walls or unleashing what we didn't know we were holding back, whatever it is for us, those two go together. Yeah. And they walk really nicely together. <laughs> so, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So, so good. So Anita, where can people go if they want to, where's the best place for them to find out more about you? If oh, they want you know what? Well, yeah. So I have a website that's called the ripple effect and effect is spelt with a, you can look me up on social Anita and Nello, and we will make sure if anybody's interested in just having a phone call and learning more about how do they grow their business, we'll make sure and put a link in the show notes uh, that Stephanie will have as a, as just a way to connect. So I'd love to be able to have conversation for somebody who's ready. If you're ready, that's great. If not, that's okay too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anita, for sharing your story and your energy and enthusiasm. It's contagious. <laughs> yes. Love it. You're welcome. And so good to see you, Stephanie. Appreciate you. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.